I woke up this morning with this thought or a concept on my mind, as I often do. And the concept was, a hungry man is a dangerous man, but a hungry society uh, leads to violence and chaos. And with that, we're going to look at some of the things that are going on right now. We've already identified in Friday's video that there are food riots and chaos already in Sri Lanka, a country that's often fairly peaceful in my opinion. But we're seeing this spreading now. There are very large food riots in Peru. We're also seeing this in China. But let's take this back. Uh, I want to go back to history a little bit first, and then let's look forward. Let's future pace to see where this could lead to. So let's start with Cameroon and Haiti in 2008, where we saw some very, very bad food riots there. Now, it's not quite the way it's always explained in that there was not enough food, people were starving, it led to riots. Actually, if you look at some of the studies and the evidence that, that actually point to more accurate things going on there, it was more a case of price gouging. There was a lot of price gouging going on. There was a lot of um, political corruption, I think is the best word going on. And of course, it brought people onto the streets. There was uh, everything else that went on back then, if you remember those uh, food riots at the time. But more importantly, I want to bring it to 2010, because this is the example that is the closest to what we're seeing right now. So back in 2010, Russia suffered a wheat uh, there was drought, fire, and this consumed around 25% of the Russian wheat crop. So let's look at that as a lesson, and then we can find out what this might do today. So let me just show you this shared screen. So here we are then, this is 2010, and you can see the wheat price was, let's just say it was somewhere around 450. Okay, now what happens, and, and we'll get into a key date in a moment, as we're going through 2010, and we get to December of 2010, and we actually hit a peak in January, but December of 2010, it went from 450 to over 750. Why is this important? Well, where are we right now with what's happening with Russia, Ukraine, and the wheat crop here, which is, I'm saying for a fact, is going to be dramatically reduced this year. Already we've seen this run up and look where it's gone now. It's going uh, through the stratosphere. Now this is really important because what happened in December of 2010, this was the spark that ignited a big movement. And this started with a Tunisian street vendor called Mohamed Bouazizi. And what he, he sold vegetables. So very simple, he just sold vegetables. Like a lot of people, they were selling food. Well, what happened was the police confiscated his stand, closed his stand down, and said he didn't have the right permit to sell food on the street. He then set himself on fire in protest. So of course, you know where this is going now. This ignited the Arab Spring. And it wasn't just confined to Tunisia, it went to Morocco and Libya, uh, Syria, Egypt, Bahrain. This was a big deal. But let's move this on now then to what we're seeing at the moment. So this is a shortage of a lot of food supplies. You're seeing it, I'm seeing it, we're all seeing it. Those people who keep saying there is no shortages, Neil, there is no you know empty shelves, um, these people are, I guess it's some sort of a mass psychosis is the only way I can describe it right now. Uh, delusion, I'm, I'm not sure what else to say because this does exist. You can go to a supermarket and you will see the shelves. They're, they're, they're not deep anymore. Sometimes they used to be six or seven deep. Now they might be two or three deep. Before you'd see 10 products, now you're seeing two or three products. It's all in the news and people still say they can't see it. Baby formula is in the news at the moment. A lot of uh, restrictions and rationing on baby formula. Uh, what else is it? Cooking oils, we're seeing cooking oils. We're seeing all the wheat and, and all the other sort of uh, products, all of these things now that we used to see a lot of, we're not seeing. We're also seeing prices just going through the roof right across the board. I did a, a video just a few weeks ago and I actually investigated those prices. Many of you watched that video, enjoyed it. Maybe you didn't enjoy it, that's probably the wrong word, but, but you watched that video and you saw what was actually happening. You've seen these prices going up. 
this is not the end, as a lot of commentators are saying. Look, they keep getting it wrong over and over again. The prices are going to keep going up. Inflation is going to keep going up. It is not going away. And this is without even talking about the white meat, um, the chickens and, and, and other poultry, um, the, the new pandemic going around, the eggs shortage that we talked about uh, two or three weeks ago as well. This is really starting to become uh, quite a real event now. But let me just outline why we're going to see this becoming so bad. Well, number one, we have the Ukraine and Russia and China. So what we saw, and again, I did a documentary on this, last year was a lot of crop failure in China. Um, we are seeing a reduction in wheat production in the bread basket. So this is your uh, Ukraine area. Russia is saying, and we don't know if this is going to happen yet, but they're saying they are not wanting to export wheat and other staples to Europe, to the USA, as they have been doing. If this actually occurs, this will be very bad for food production, for food prices. So we have this. This is, I remember back in 2010 when we had these food crises, it was very different to what's happened now. So we had one main component, but now not only do we have droughts and flooding and crop failures and, and conflict in, in or war, shall we say, in the Ukraine, but on top of this now, we had all the supply chain breakdowns and they haven't been restored. I don't know why there's all these lies being put out by the media. These supply chain breakdowns have not been restored. They cannot be restored while China is continuing to do their lockdowns, while ports are closed, while um, these other nations are now trading between themselves. They're not sending the same amount of cargo ships and cargo over to the West. This is a fact. This is what's going on. It's not being talked about. But what else do you have? You also have what do you need to actually run the food production facilities, uh, the entire industry. You need staff, which we're short of. There is a huge shortage of workers, but you need the fertilizers. Let's ban fertilizers, ban anything from, God help us, seriously. Let's ban everything, let's ban all the food. Okay, G good idea for all these people that keep shouting all this, let's ban everything. Okay, this is gonna make it even worse. This is having a knock-on effect to everything. We're now having this added to it. But also, and again, let's link this together with the staffing, let's link it to the supply chain issues. You need fuel, you need diesel to run the harvesters and to, to plant the crops. You need the parts, which are in short supply as well for some of the farming equipment. All of these, it, it's, you've got to think of it like a big machine and all these little cogs. And at the moment, all these cogs are just being pulled out and they're broken. The machine cannot work effectively unless all of the little cogs work as well. And I really do believe that America is going to be hit really, really hard from all so is Europe but America later on is going to be hit really hard if people don't wise up to what's actually going on and can't see all the things that are going on with the food production industry again I cover this in the Great Depression diaries uh, I know pretty much every single one of you watching has, has watched those diaries now you know this is what is coming the USA in particular has just exported everything they've exported all of the hard work to developing nations, to China. China's now the factory of the USA. It, it, it somewhat baffles me every time people talk about American products, American companies. Look, we make all this stuff, it's so great. No, no, it's all made in China. China have the factories. China are the ones producing everything. The American companies are just brands. They're experts at, at branding and uh, creating this part in your mind where you think all oh, these products are great American made. A lot of it is made in China and Vietnam and all these developing nations. So the corporations got not only greedy by exporting it all to make more profits, but lazy at the same time. And it's a shame when you sort of embed this into a, an entire society, because in my opinion, hard work uh, never hurts anyone. In fact, I believe it's really good for, for character building and um, morale building as a society. And that's why we're seeing the very youngest generation at the moment now have this aversion to hard work as if it's below them or as if they don't want to do hard work. And that's for those other people on the other side of the world. No, hard work is, is character building, it's morale building, it really builds you into something as a person. And I'm very glad that I had that lesson put into me. So this is my big concern. When all this starts to hit and when the de-dollarization of globalization starts to occur, 
the USA is going to be hit the hardest of all the developing nations. But Europe will as well. The, the euro is, is, is doomed eventually in the long term. But this is the way we're seeing it. Just as I've said, make sure that you are as self-sufficient as you possibly can be with, with food and, and everything else that you, you can do. Look, you can stock up as much food as you want, but if something goes on for a long period of time, years sometimes these things can go on for, yes, you're gonna be able to keep buying food because where does the food go to? It goes to the wealthiest nations. But under these circumstances, remember, it's different. It's a different situation. If Russia and some of the others don't want to export food to unfriendly nations, as they call it, we're going to have a little bit more trouble this time around. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care. God bless. See you tomorrow.